I am continuing my video series on Gog and Magog. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. In the last episode, we revealed that the mythical land of Gog and Magog was, in fact, a real place. And I've pinpointed exactly where it was, and where it still exists today. Using the pre-flood tabula rogerina map, which we discussed in the video about Cairo Babylon, I discovered that Ard Yujuj and Ard Majuj, Arabic for the land of Gog and Magog, are clearly marked on this 1145 map. The map even outlines the mountain range Yajuj and Majuj bordering these lands. While academia dismisses these ancient maps as mythical, I found the exact same mountain range where the map indicated, in the far northeastern corner of the world. Today, we know this area as the Arctic northeastern part of Siberia, in regions like Autonomous Yukaka, northeastern Sakya, Magadan, and Kamchatka. This is where Gog and Magog are located. As you'll see, the geographical features on the 1154 map closely match those we see today. But there's even more evidence. The surrounding areas like the land of the Kemek Turks, Dagestan, and Sijan also correspond to real locations that existed during medieval times. Interestingly, Gog and Magog were often placed next to what was considered a terrestrial paradise, hinting at a deeper connection to some of the world's most mysterious regions, like North Korea. Could this be why North Korea remains so isolated today? So, could Gog and Magog have been real? Stay tuned as we continue to uncover these ancient secrets. This is a 1732 map of what is here called Great Tartary. The area previously named Gog and Magog is now called Parts Unknown. This mirrors many other maps from the 1700s that label as Parts Unknown where previously there lived giants. After being bombed or eliminated, certain places in Africa, North America, Arabia, and even here in Russia, are labeled Parts Unknown, even though they were thriving kingdoms previously. The Judgy were also a tribe. The indigenous people of Chukaka are still called Chukchi, and they share genetics with Native Americans. Just to give you a sample of the BS you find in modern academia. The Chukchi are traditionally divided into the maritime Chukchi, who had settled homes on the coast and lived primarily from sea mammal hunting, and the reindeer Chukchi, who lived as nomads in the inland tundra region, migrating seasonally with their herds of reindeer. The Russian name Chukchi is derived from the Chukchi word Chauchu, or rich in reindeer, which was used by the reindeer Chukchi to distinguish themselves from the maritime Chukchi called in Kalath, or the Sea People. Their name for a member of the Chukchi ethnic group as a whole is Luor of Etlin, literally genuine person. Wikipedia. Looking on ancient maps, we see that the people were called Judgi and Chukchi, the ancient names for Gog. Rich in reindeer has nothing to do with it. In fact, Chuck Otka reveals it to be the same old ancient German I've already discussed at length elsewhere. For the record, I'm not deriving from this that the modern-day Chukchi are to be equated with the people of Gog and Magog. The indigenous today are neither cannibals nor giants. Let's now have a new look at what the ancients said about Gog Magog. This is from the Bible, Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 8. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. The number of them is like the sand of the seashore. Hmm. The verse is a mystery to me. Why are the four corners of the earth called Gog and Magog? We just learned that Gog Magog is in one of the corners of the earth, the far northeast. Or, maybe Gog Magog is an old name for all Arctic Antarctic places. Or maybe it's called Four Corners, because the North Pole is seen as a center of the Earth from which four streams flow, as some ancient texts indicate. Are the flash-frozen creatures going to be thawed out in some kind of warming event? I don't know. This is the only reference in the entire New Testament. And there's only one significant reference in the Old Testament. Son of Man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the Prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal, and prophecy against him, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, Prince of Rosh, Meshach and Tubal. The views of Gog and Magog are extremely negative, associating them with Satan, and God personally telling them I am against you. Today, the indigenous people of northern Siberia live in a dire state. Magadan and Chukotka were the locations of horrific Gulag concentration camps of the communist years. 
This is from the Wikipedia page on Gog and Magog. Two chapters of the Kuran, al Kaf and al Anbiya, discuss Gog and Magog. In the Kuran, Yajuj and Majuj, or Gog and Magog, are suppressed by Shulkarnain, the Two Horned One. Jalkarnain, having journeyed to the ends of the world, meets a people who scarcely understood a word, who seek his help in building a barrier that will separate them from the people of Yajuj and Majuj, who do great mischief on earth. He agrees to build it for them, but warns that when the time comes, last age, God will remove the barrier. I don't know why, but my eyes suddenly filled with tears after hearing this verse recited in Arabic. Well, there really is a mountain barrier that spans the entirety of Gog Magog. As this barrier is still there, we can conclude we are not yet in the last stage. The early Muslim traditions were summarized by Zakaria al kazwini who died in 1283, in two popular works, called the Cosmography and the Geography. Gog and Magog, he says, live near to the sea that encircles the earth and can be counted only by God. Today, it is still found near the sea that encircles earth. According to Shia sources, Yajuj and Majuj are not from the children of Adam or the human race. However, in other sources, they're described as small-eyed humans. Al-Kafi, one of their primary collections of hadith, states that it has been narrated from Abnu Abbas that when he asked Ali about the creatures, he responded by saying, God has created 1,200 species on the land, 1,200 species in the sea, 70 species from the children of Adam, and the people are the children of Adam, except for the Yajuj and Majuj. The cannibals and giants are called extraterrestrials here. Which makes sense if we remember that the giants were the offspring of illicit relationship between fallen angels and humans. In the Syriac Alexander legend, dating to 629 to 630, Gog and Magog appear as kings of Hennish nations. Written by a Christian based in Mesopotamia, the legend is considered the first work to connect the gates with the idea that Gog and Magog are destined to play a role in the apocalypse. The legend claims that Alexander carved prophecies on the face of the gate, marking a date for when these Huns, consisting of 24 nations, will breach the gate and subjugate the greater part of the world. Strangely, even today, travel to parts of Gog Magog are restricted not only to foreigners but also to Russian citizens. Why? Before the Iron Curtain fell, they said the reason was because Shutakta is close to Alaska. It poses the risk of people escaping communism by trying to swim or take a boat to Alaska. But after the Iron Curtain fell, in 1989, the restriction was kept in place, meaning that this had never been the real reason. The real reason is kept secret to this day. As you already know, we find similar unexplained restrictions in other polar regions. The conclusion is, the more I look into these matters, the clearer it becomes that what the ancients told us through religion and mythology is mostly true and accurate, and most of what we are told by academia is a deception. When George Orwell said we are living in an age of universal deceit, he meant it. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.